Hello, my name is Keith Elford and I am the priest in charge of St John the Baptist West Byfleet and this is Thought and Prayer for October and I'm recording it on Wednesday the 19th of October. I have been praying, I suppose, since I was, certainly since my teens, which makes it about 50 years, uh, which as soon as I say that, it feels like a dreadfully long time. And yet, I also feel, I think, that I don't know very much about prayer, and I certainly don't think I have any natural aptitude for it. Particularly when one considers um, the kind of fuller idea of what prayer is and how we might think of it. Um, I'm pretty good at asking God for things, uh, which certainly is one and perfectly uh, imp you know, important and a reasonable form of prayer. Yes, um, I, I pray regularly for the people I'm concerned for and for the things and situations I'm concerned for. And perhaps many of you do too. And that's great. But prayer has perhaps a slightly deeper purpose than, than that of, of, as it were, unloading ourselves uh, to God and asking for God's help. Um, prayer is the means, the main means really, by which we engage with God, by which we draw closer to God, by which God acts, if you like, upon us. And when we pray, it really ought to have the feeling of coming home. We're coming into the presence of God, who is our Father, our Brother, our Redeemer, our Friend. And we are spending time with Him. And we are getting to know Him better. And in getting to know Him better, we are getting to love Him more. And He is enabling us to see the world a little differently and we are being a bit reorientated and we are also if you like connecting to the, the you know the great source of energy and life and purpose now all that's grand isn't it uh, how does one do that well i don't think there is a simple answer and as i say i am absolutely not an expert i've tried lots of things over a long time uh, but mostly my the story of my prayer life is in a sense the story of not praying very well and the kind of prayer i'm talking about i suppose i suppose is more uh, contemplative or meditative and it's as much about silence and about listening as it is about talking. So we may want to practice spending time in the presence of God in silence. If you're the kind of person who can do that, that's good. In order to do that, you may need to quieten yourself down. So you may need to do things like breathing exercises, centering exercises, to put yourself in a frame of mind that's more calm and receptive and open. You might consider um, reading either from the great spiritual writers um, that's one of the things I do and I use this book here which is called The Joy of the Saints and it contains extracts one every day from some of the great spiritual writers that helps me into a more contemplative and meditative space you might read from the Bible of course and in doing so, you might try, rather than analyse the story, you might, for example, try to put yourself into the story and imagine yourself in it and identify perhaps as one of the characters and see if God, as it were, speaks to you. These are all things you can try. But I think where I'm going to end up with this um, especially as I'm speaking as I regard myself as, a, uh, as experienced but as an, strictly as an amateur in this matter. I think the most reliable and helpful resource for me um, uh, you know, is the set prayer services um, of the Church of England. All priests are encouraged to, as the lingo goes, say the office. 
daily. That is to use the morning prayer and or evening prayer service um, in the Church of England as a kind of framework for one's personal prayer, which means using a lot of set material. Now, you may find yourselves rebelling against that idea. You want to be more flowing. You want to be more spontaneous. Well, if that suits you and you can do it, brilliant. There are no rules. But what I, the reason I recommend the, um, the daily services um, is that they provide you with a framework and they provide you with something to fall back on when your own resources are a bit exhausted. And the value of liturgy is I never tire of saying of written prepared liturgy is it carries you along. And of course, if you're using these things on your own, at any point you feel moved to do so, you can just stop and think or move into a more spontaneous form of prayer and then you can go back if you wish. Now, there are many resources. Of course, there are loads of books. It's, um, it's a, there is a daily prayer book which we use in church on Monday mornings. That's an option, by the way. You can join us for morning prayer, which we do together on Mondays in, in church most Mondays. However, one of the ways in which the world has become an awful lot easier is that um, prayer has gone into the world of apps on your smartphone. Now, most of you have got a smartphone, not everybody I know, but most of you have. And you can get um, the full daily prayer service um, by app. And so you have the whole service for the day with all the readings, the right readings and the right psalms and so on chosen for you. Not chosen for you, but set. They're already set, but in the service. So you can just use it. Or if that's too much for you, and it is quite long, there are shortened forms. The one I use quite a bit is called Time to Pray. And you can just download that free from the Church of England. Um, in fact, via Google Play or the, app or the Apple App Store, I think. And... And there you are, you have a little, fr a little service for you every day. I want to encourage you, um, if you pray occasionally, to pray more often. If you never pray, try it. You see, in the end, Christian faith is a matter of you or me and God. It's about us engaging with God. And in, there is a sense in which the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Now, prayer is famously fraught with um, challenges and difficulties of distraction and not being able to concentrate and not always finding the kind of emotional um, response or feeling that one looks for. And there is an element of discipline and of practice. But I am pretty confident that if you try praying and stick at it for a bit, you will find that God will meet you there. I'm going to use, in closing, a prayer that um, occurs in the time to prayer service at least once or twice a week. It's the prayer of St. Augustine, and I think it really summarises what we're trying to do in prayer, how we're trying to grow, grow closer to God, and in growing closer to God, to be more convinced of and engaged with all that God can do for us. Let us pray. Eternal God, who are the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Goodbye, and I will see you in November.